This video comes from Vox, the title, The Formula for Selling a Million Dollar Work of Art. Uh, to, me, to me, there's at least one thing here, one thing which uh, I hope they touch on, which is that it needs to be meaningless. It needs to be something which you can't really uh, discern as a work of quality in any way, because then you can put any price tag you want on it and there's no argument you can make against that. Let's see what the formula is. In September of 2008, something unheard of happened in the art world. A British artist, Damien Hirst, took 223 pieces of his new work to Sotheby's auction house and sold every single piece. I'll start the bidding here at 2,500,000 pounds. It was a two-day event and the total sale was about 200 million dollars. It broke the record for a single artist auction of 20 million dollars back in 1993. So yeah, okay. I mean, I wonder, I wonder what was going on there. If there was anything kind of underlying that or, or preceding that, which really set him in motion. And of course, uh, you know, everybody talks about this whole money laundering aspect, and you have to wonder, you know, what what really drove those high price tags. His work included things like the zebra, this unicorn, and this painting made from butterflies. So how did he? How do artists do this? Well, for the most part, the artists aren't the ones behind it. Yeah, so that's that's a very common theme. If you guys have ever seen Adam Ruins Everything, he has a great a great video that talks about this. And uh, we'll see we'll see what they say about who is behind it. The bigger the work, generally the more expensive it is. But the biggest variable is the reputation of the artist. Sometimes you're world famous and sometimes you're not. I mean, the big, the big question here, the big question you have to be asking is what, what makes them so famous? What gives them that reputation? It's usually not going to be just them alone and something that they do, but, but rather a kind of network that's helping to prop them up. But when a new artist steps into the art market, the reputation of the artist heavily relies on the name of the dealer. The Shark by Damien Hirst is a good example. Hirst first began working with an art industry giant, Charles Saatchi, in the 1990s. Uh, but there, there you go. I mean, that, that's absolutely critical. The basic laws of economics also apply. The next step of operation for the dealer is creating scarcity. In 1999, when Jenny Saville, a new emerging British artist, became affiliated with Charles Saatchi, he convinced her to cut her work down to only six paintings per year. Yeah, so that's, I mean, regardless of all this uh, modern art nonsense, that's my advice to anyone who's a painter out there. Focus on making something great. Focus on uh, bigger projects rather than just trying to sell a lot of paintings. You're going to have a much better time. You're going to be making better work. That work will be easier to sell, even though you're selling it for a higher price. And then, of course, you're selling it for a higher price. So it, you don't have to go and find 30 collectors. You can find just a few, and that will be enough to you know, sustain you for a very long time if you're actually making some really high quality paintings. So definitely quality over quantity. This chart shows the art world might be learning the lesson Sachi taught Jenny Saville. The total value of the art that's being sold is growing faster than the number of pieces. Sell less of it for more. You know, again, coming back to uh, everybody talks about this whole money laundering thing, it would be much easier to buy work that's way more valuable if you have a lot of money you need to move or if you need to uh, kind of find a tax haven it would be a lot easier to buy multi-million dollar artwork rather than buying uh, you know in any other type of painting or art or or what have you. The dealer model still dominates the fine art world, but for the rest of us, selling art online has never been easier. The prices are open and it's accessible for a broad group of people. And for one thing, now you know where to start. Think big. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know that I would say this is a formula per se, but at least that last piece of advice, think big, I think that's a great piece of advice. And that's really the way to make sure that you're producing uh, quality over quantity. And I think that's much more exciting as a painter to really go for something big and to go for something challenging rather than just making many small works. So do with that what you will. If you have any videos you'd like me to react to, if there's any 
questions that you have about painting, about kitsch, about the art, leave it in the comments. I will be looking at all of the comments. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.